Welcome to your how-to guide on credit cards for international students. Credit cards and debit cards are both convenient ways to pay for goods without using cash. They look similar, but are quite different. When you use a credit card, you are borrowing money, usually from a bank, and you will have to pay the money back later. When you use a debit card, it pulls money that you already have in your own bank account. Credit cards can be used to shop in stores and online, but you shouldn't use it to take money out of the ATM, and you usually can't use it to pay rent or bills. Debit cards can be used to shop too, but they aren't quite as safe as credit cards, especially online. You can use a debit card like cash, but be careful not to overdraft, meaning spending more money than you have in your bank account. Frank Abagnale's advice is this. I don't use a debit card. The safest thing is a credit card because you're using the bank's money. If someone accesses your information, they are stealing the bank's money, not yours. He would know. He was the famous bank thief from Catch Me If You Can. You might be asking yourself, why would I want a credit card? My grandma always told me, don't spend money you don't have. Well, if you're planning to stay in the U.S. for several years, you might want to buy a car or rent an apartment off campus one day. But banks and landlords will want to know whether you can be trusted to pay your bills on time, and they can only determine that by looking at your history of borrowing, also known as your credit history. It takes time to build a strong credit history, so it makes sense to get started early. Now that you know more about credit cards, you might be wondering, how do I get one? Here are four tips. Tip number one, most banks will require that you provide your social security number, also referred to as an SSN. F1, M1, and J1 visa holders who are authorized to work can apply for an SSN. Ask your international student office about what documents you will need to show the social security office. Tip number two, Ask your student services office if your school has a credit union. Unlike regular banks, credit unions are nonprofit organizations that often offer lower interest rates and are more likely to approve students for credit cards. Tip number three, apply for a credit card in person instead of online because it's harder to reject a friendly human. Call the bank the day before to ask about what supporting documents you will need to bring with you. Tip number four, two types of beginner credit cards to ask about are secured credit cards and student credit cards. Secured credit cards require you to connect your credit card with your personal bank account. The bank will offer you a credit limit that matches how much money you actually have in your account. So in a way, secured credit cards are similar to debit cards. Both secured and student credit cards may have high interest rates and low credit limits but they are a good way to start building your credit so you can get better credit cards later on in your life. If you aren't convinced, and you want to know, what should I be worried about? Interest is what a bank charges you for borrowing money from them. The good news? If you pay off your credit card on time every month, you pay zero interest and you build a strong credit history. Your credit limit is the maximum amount you can borrow or charge to your credit card. Charging 30% of your credit limit and paying the balance in full every month will have the best effect on your credit history. In other words, if your credit limit is $100, only charge $30 to your card, then pay it off immediately. Some stores offer their own credit cards which are different from loyalty cards you might get at the grocery store or pharmacy. They are easier to get and can help you build credit history, but often have a high interest rate. These should generally be your last option. College seniors graduate with an average credit card debt of $4,100. That's on top of their student loans. Remember, learning how to budget your income is just as important as building your credit. You might also be worried about someone stealing your card. Check your purchase record every month when you pay your bill. And if you notice anything strange, call the bank right away. They will protect you. 
The same goes for if you lose your card accidentally. Grandma is always right, of course. After all, the best way to build your credit is to only charge what you can afford to pay off immediately. But sometimes things happen. You get in an accident or you have to buy a new computer and having the option to buy now and pay later can be very helpful. Credit cards don't have to be scary if you understand how they work and your responsibility for maintaining good credit.